Good evening, brothers and sisters, friends and neighbors, and all those who have tuned in with us by way of the internet. We welcome you to Beargrass Missionary Baptist Church, Wednesday, November the 3rd, 2021, tonight's uh, midweek Bible study. Reverend Williams and I are glad to have you with us. This is Pastor Smizer is also glad to have you with us. And Sister Williams is also glad, I'm sure, to have you with us. Tonight we begin a new unit. Our study for the last few weeks has been from the book of Psalms. Well, tonight we begin a study with a few studies from the book of Revelation. It's not a study of the apocalypse or what's going to happen in the end and all of that. That's not our focus for tonight. We're simply continuing our study on praise this week. That's our lesson we'll focus mostly on unity in praise. Unity in praise. We'll find out tonight as we study our lesson that heaven is united. I don't know, there are no denominations in heaven. Everybody is on one accord with Christ and the Father in heaven. And there is unity, and as, that, as we will see, as we get into the lesson, we'll find out that there is unity in heaven. Unlike on earth, we can't hardly decide who is uh, going to be the preacher this week, who is, uh, who is going to read the scripture this week, who is going to do this or going to do that. That's down here, but in heaven, there is only unity, and then that unity is only to praise God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's the only objective in heaven. If you're looking for a golf course, don't go to heaven. There ain't no golf course in heaven. And little grandma or grandpa didn't become an angel. I don't know all these stories that you hear down here under the sun. You may hear them, they may sound good and tickle your ears, but they are not biblical. And nothing that is not biblical is worth our time. We're going to open up with a prayer and get straight to our study on unity in praise in our new unit. So let us pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for tonight. Thank you for tonight's study. Open our ears and our minds and our hearts as we delve once again into your holy word. Lord, we can't even teach, we can't even discuss your word without thy spirit. We get all tangled up and we ask, O oh Lord, that you would be with us in our time together. Be with those who have tuned in to uh, hear our study tonight. Bless them that they may receive something that will help them along the way. We pray in the name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Okay. Visions of Praise is our uh, unit title. And our first lesson is unity. If it's one thing we need, it's unity. It's not so much about apocalypse. and There are more subjects in the Revelation than the apocalypse. And tonight we're going to look at one of the other subjects instead of the seals and the bowls and the trumpets and we're not going to worry and the thunders. We still don't know what the thunders said, but that's another story. Seven thunders uttered their voice, but they were told to seal it up and that's later on. We've got so many other things that we need to learn other than, oh, what's going to happen in the end? What's going to happen in the end? Let me look. And so everybody goes running to Revelation, and hardly nobody has the right answer. So we're going to leave that alone tonight and focus mainly on praise in heaven. What's going on in heaven? And as we uh, see in our study tonight, there's a lot going on in heaven. I, uh, before we get started, I'd like to say, remember Saturday night. Fall back Saturday night. This is the weekend where we change our clocks back. Fall back, spring forward. 
and Saturday night, I think it'll be the 6th, the morning of the 7th, we set our clocks back regular to Eastern, I think it's Eastern Standard Time in the key. The only thing I know is I get another hour of sleep every <laughs> day. <laughs> All right. So, so remember, you don't have to be late to, to service Sunday morning because you get an extra hour, as Keith mm -hmm. has already said. Remember to fall back, not fall forward. It's spring forward, fall back. It is fall, and in the fall, we set the clocks back. Okay. I wanted us to understand that now. As we get into our study, remember, we're not studying so much the apocalyptic parts of Revelation. We're not going to so much study the messages to the seven churches uh, mentioned in Revelation. We're going to concentrate on this one little interlude where there is praise going on in heaven. And, and that's what we've been studying the last few weeks is praise David would praise God with psaltery and harps and anything else he could find. We have a we 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 argue over a piano in the church. We argue well. There's no piano in the Old Testament. There's no organ in the Old Testament. Why should we have a piano? In the Old? Man, nonsense. God says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. he, he wasn't just talking about the Old Testament. He's talking about even if a robin, remember that song we used to sing, if a robin can say thank you, you can do it too. Okay. Keith, I better let you say a few words here. If thank you, Reverend Al. Yes, sir. I want to go to a couple of scriptures that we have in our lesson this evening in, in uh, Revelation. One I'd like to go to is in chapter 7 where our lesson is found. Verse number 9. Chapter 7, verse number 9. And there'll be others that are really worth quoting, even the last one. The last one will bring tears to your eyes when it talks about tears. And by the way, I come this evening not being a scholar of Revelation, but wanting to know more about it, and knowing the way that I can know more about it is to read. There's no one that can give you more information than you can uh, obtain if you read for yourself because you'll be able to retain it if it's something that you really want and desire. Now, verse number nine. And after this, I beheld. So after this is almost like a therefore, which means that you need to back up and see what else is going on so you'll be able to more, have a more rounded view of it. But it says, after this, a great multitude, which no man could count, of all the nations, and there's more to bring onto it, all the nations, not just Israel, not just uh, Greece, not just Patmos, but of all the nations, and, and kindred, and people, and tongues stood before the throne, and for the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, it means that they come for a special occasion, a special occasion of giving praise to God and to Christ Jesus for what he's done. It's wonderful to know that. And it says, you know, that no man can number. And we know that we have different groups that say where well, there's only a limited amount of people that are going to heaven. It says no man can number. So how can you tell me that, what the limit is? Well, who's going to stand out there and count? One, two, three, four. It's not going to happen. Anyway, and it says... And a cry with a loud voice saying, Salvation to our God, which sit upon the throne and unto the Lamb. They are there to praise, as our lesson say. They are there to praise Christ and to praise God. And to praise the Holy Spirit for what all is done and is doing. And if we look at Revelations, what little I've gathered from it, it's divided into three categories. It's divided into the category of the past, the present, and the future that God knows all those. In fact, if you look at some of your Bibles, and I recommend the old Bibles if you can get a hold of them. If you, find, if you go into a bookstore, just browse and see if you can find one of the old Bibles because they carry a great deal of information that you may not get from the newer Bibles. But anyway, this information it gives us is 
the title of Revelation. One Bible says the book of Revelation. It just stops at that. Another one says the book of Revelations of Jesus Christ. But this old one I have says the book of Revelations that God gave to Jesus Christ, which he gave to John, passes on down to us. And how wonderful know it is that John wrote down everything God told him and it was presented to us that we may know. And that's why we come here. We come here to know about the celebration that was going to be held and is being held in heaven. And this celebration is a celebration of those that are believers. And that's wonderful to know. So remember those three categories. It's an unveiling. That's what the revelation means, to unveil, to make known something that was not known. And there are many things in the future we don't know and won't know until Jesus reveals them to us in heaven, if that's what he decided to do. And he told the apostles that they would be witnesses to him. Wherein? In Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the utmost part of the earth. How wonderful it is to know that, to know those things. And as I said, I'm really weak in this, but I'd still like to get, share what I've gotten from it. And the thing that I've gotten from it is that Jesus affirms what he's done and what he's about to do. He's about to come back and take care of all those people that denied him, that beat him, that called him a scandal, that said there was no such thing as the Son of Man. And he's about to reveal himself to them. And there's great praise going on in heaven for that revealing. Reverend Dow? Thanks, Reverend Williams. Also, in line with what Keith had been telling us, we have to remember, especially in that verse 1, where it says, after this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, a great multitude. Keith has already said, how are you going to do? Count them all, one, two, three. Even John didn't recognize how many was in the multitude. We must remember that during the tribulation period, when the tribulation period comes, we're not even in the tribulation. We, our little discomforts and toils and tribulations down here cannot compare to the, to the great tribulation period that shall come upon the whole earth. That's one of the reasons for this interlude of praise between the messages to the churches and the scripture says after this. I want you to turn back in your Bibles to chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6. And I'd like to read verses 15, 16, and 17. So that's Revelation chapter 6, verses 15, 16, and 17. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men. Look at all, look at all these great. And every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. The wrath of the Lamb. These are so important. To me, this is a important why we've got this interlude. Look what's going on. A nice praise. Heaven is praising. I don't know about what's going on on earth right here, but, but heaven is praising God during this little interlude between the churches here. Verse 17, for the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? When his wrath is poured out, as we'll see later on in Revelation, It's a time of Jacob's trouble, as Scripture calls it. You're going to... The church is... Well, some, some say the church will not be here. We have an opportunity to join the church now. Get yourself saved now. And you don't have to worry about this. Who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? How's it going to be? What's it going to be? You don't have to worry about any of that. You are saved. When he comes back to claim us for himself, you'll go with him. It's important to get saved now. 
while we have time, you know, we used to sing a song, I'll praise him while I have a chance, while I have a chance. You're not going to have a chance one day. You're going to be gone from here before you know it, and you won't have a chance. But for the sake of the discussion tonight, I wanted to read those three verses so we could understand. Who shall be able, you can't stand, you, not you, as, not me, not any of us will be able to stand. So while we have this interlude, while we can see what's going on in heaven, we should do just what they're doing in heaven. Hey, they're praising the Lord. They, they're not thinking about us. We go to church and look around and see who's coming, who's got what on. If they were here, on, they wouldn't be interested in what you've got on. You can, you can come as you will. They're going to be praising the Lord. That's what it's all about. It's about the Lamb, God the Father. It's all about them. The whole universe is going to praise Him one day. You, we have an opportunity to join in today so that when we are gone away from here, we will know where we're going and we'll be able to join in the Hallelujah Chorus. Okay. Verse uh, 10. Well, let me finish reading verse 9. After, after this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all the nations and kindreds and peoples and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms, in their hands. That's that's what that. I know. Uh, I don't want to get into too much of do dogma and doctrine, but we need to understand what what who are they talking about? Who are these people? Well, some people try to say it's the church. Some people say it's not the church. Some say these are the redeemed folks coming out of the great tribulation, as the scripture is going to say later on once we get to that part. The key tonight is to focus on the praise that's going on. Not so much who's praising, but, but uh, the praise is to the, to the Father. We, we need to understand that. Verse 10, and cried with a loud voice saying, salvation to our God. Here's another reference. Our God. He's our God. He's not the God of your understanding. He's not some little G God. We've got to understand, we have a God. America even has a God, if we would just go back to him. America was founded upon godly principles, and we should go back to those principles. If we don't go back, then you take it upon yourself to be in this number here, our God, not their God, not somebody else's God, our God. He is, I claim him for yourself. I have a God. When I run into troubles down here, I always have a way out. My God will bring me through. If he doesn't bring me through, then I'll be with him in heaven. So either way, I win. We have to remember our God. Be careful as you read the scriptures. Take every word in its context and don't take it out of context. Our God, which sitteth upon the throne. Our God sitteth upon the throne. We have to remember that. No one else can sit on that throne but him. Others have tried. If we know the story of how Satan, excuse me, Lucifer, how Lucifer fell, we have to remember he tried to ascend and be like the Most High God. What happened to him? You're not stronger than Lucifer, so don't you even try. And unto the Lamb. Notice the verse says, God and the Lamb. The Father raised the lamb. He raised his son. All of it ties together. We have to remember scripture is one united one united one. It's, it's all one. From Genesis to Revelation all speaks of the lamb of God. The Jews and their Messiah. You have to remember that. The Bible is about the Jews and their Messiah. That's what it's all about. All right, Keith, I guess I better shut up for a while. When you uh, study the Bible, you'll find out there's some reference to this time of coming in the Old Testament. 
in the book of Daniel. So I recommend that you read Daniel chapter 7 and chapter 9. When Daniel prays to God for understanding and being able to know two things. One, when the capture or the time that their imprisonment is going to be over. And the other is about future things to come. And God reveals those to him through an angel who comes to him and gives him understanding. Also, I'd like to mention that in the New Testament, we only have, outside of the book of Revelation, we only have a few times when this period of time is mentioned. And that's in Matthew chapter 24 and chapter 25. But there's a beautiful passage that I would like to read from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, starting with verse number 14, I believe is what I want to start with. I have to look at my notes. Yeah. Chapter 4, start with verse number 14. Give everyone a chance to find that scripture. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 14 through 19. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you, the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep, those that are already gone on. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and we shall so ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I don't have to worry about it. That's where I hope to be. My faith is in Jesus Christ, that he will come back for us Amen. in the period they call the rapture, and he will take us on to heaven. And Matthew, as I said, he mentions that. He says, you know, when Jesus comes back, he and his holy angels, and he goes on in detail about what will happen. So we have that faith, and we have that, that word that we can share with others that are worried about what's going to happen to me after I die. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. No if you, Yes, if you take Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, there's no worry whatsoever about that. And that's wonderful to know. Amen. Uh, one other book, in, uh, one other verse in this Thessalonians, and this goes to chapter 2, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse number 8. Uh, in Thessalonians, the period, the people were worried about my relatives. You know, if... if if my relatives have died, how am I assured that they will be in heaven? And the writer of Thessalonians tells them, don't worry about that. God takes care of everything. Don't you worry about that. The only thing you do is trust and obey and believe in him. So 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse number 8. Thessalonians is such a small book, wow. but it has something powerful to say. Okay. Verse number 8 says, Then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord has consumed with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy the brightness of his coming. Now, what he's saying here, Satan's been doing what we call wolf tickets about he's going to rule, he's this and he's that. And he's influenced and poisoned many people to believe in him. But there's a day coming when Jesus will come and will destroy Satan and kick him out and all of his angels with him. And then they have a special place to go in the fiery pit which will burn forever and forever. And that's where they will reside. So we see that we have nothing to fear, and there's a good reason for the celebration 
we're celebrating in our lesson tonight because of his victory. And it's not a temporary victory. You remember Paul said one thing about, he said, and we are more than conquerors. It means that there's no end to the victory that God has under our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we should be thankful for that and enjoy for that because it's such a wonderful thing to know. Uh, Reverend Dow, do you have something you'd like to add? Well, back to verse 11 in the lesson, United in Praise. I want us to continue our thoughts about being united. It's so important, especially today, for Christians to be united. Look at the example that is set for us in heaven. Don't, don't worry about Papa, Daddy, uh, Grandma, or even your cute little kid, bless the little heart. It's not going to be, be an angel. The angels are already settled. God knows how many angels there are. Look at, look at verse 11. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts. The identity of these groups is disputed by many. I'm not going to try at this time to delineate who uh, the four elders are sitting on the thrones and who are the four beasts. I'm not going to try to get into that tonight. I wanted us to concentrate on unity in heaven the four beasts and all the angels uh, and, and all the elders are in unity look what it, look what happens and about the elders and the four beasts and fell on and fell before the throne on their faces and worship God when's the last time you've been on your face before God think about that for a moment we don't hardly want to say our a prayer on our knees. We get to go to bed tonight. We'll be down there for about 10, 15 seconds. Yep, see you later, Lord. And we'll get up off of our knees. We won't even get on our knees, much less our faces. But the example that is set for us, especially here in the book of Revelation, is on, on their faces. The angels, the beasts, the elders, the whole of heaven is on their faces before God. He loves it when we worship like that. If we would get on our faces more, we wouldn't have so many problems down here. Saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Look, look at the descriptive words here. There are like seven, seven descriptive words coming from this throng of people around the, oh, come on, can you see the throne? Can you see him sitting on the throne? The whole of heaven is united and gathered together and they fall on their faces. And look what they say. Blessing, glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, honor, power, might. And anything else you want to put in there is his. He's worthy of it. The point being, look at all of the things we can say. People say they can't say, can't pray. Well, anybody can say a prayer of blessing and glory, wisdom and power. Anybody can say that. That's not hard to say. Even the model prayer, if you start out with our Father who art in heaven, you start out worshiping him. He's on the throne in heaven. You can do that. Hallowed, be we, we're supposed to hallow his name. Make his name sacred. All of the first parts of every prayer should be in deference to him. Before you give him your catalog of wants and needs, and I'm not saying don't give him your catalog of wants and needs. He's able to supply your every need. That's not what we're saying here. We're saying get your priorities right. Worship him. Ask him to fulfill your needs always worship him. First thing I want to do is hallow your name. Your name is sacred. Your name is great. That's the first thing we want to do. That's the first thing they did in heaven. Blessing, glory, honor, power, all of these things. Mike, I give to you. They're in heaven. They're not even on earth. They don't need anything. They are completely holy and pure and separate from sin. 
yet and still they worship. You don't see where it says where angels uh, pray. You know, I don't think I've seen a verse where it's talking about angels praying. But they praise him. They praise him day and night in his temple. And that's part of the example that we are supposed to take upon ourselves. And one of the elders answered, saying uh, unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they notice? The elder puts a question to John. Who are these all of these? Who, who is this multitude up here? And uh, John's unable to answer, so he offers his excuse, his effort. He makes an effort to to uh, speak back to the uh, elder who's talking to him. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. Of course he knew. He was asking you. Why are you asking back? And, and that's the way it is with us. I think it's in the book of Zechariah. There's a, quite a few visions in Zechariah. And uh, the giver of the uh, vision is always asking. And, and Zechariah's answer is, Sir, thou knowest. Sir, thou know if you already know, ain't no need of me trying to, well, you can't answer. You don't know the answer. So, so in this one, notice that the elder gives the answer. These are they which came out of great tribulation. These are they that came out of great tribulation. This is not the church. I, don't, I, I mean, there, there, there are many points of view. I'm not going to try to persuade you one way or another, but if you can't, the church doesn't go through the tribulation. From chapter 4 in Revelation, we'll see the church is never mentioned again. You see the seven churches, the messages to the churches. But after chapter 4, or after chapter 3 and, and chapter 4, you don't see the church on the earth anymore. Why? The church has been raptured. They, they are now in heaven, a separate group from this group here, even as great a multitude as it is. You can try to discuss that someday uh, if pastor wants to find that up but the, the elder is telling them these are they that came through great tribulation when the church is gone people are still going to be here they're not going to make it to the church they're going to regret not having joined church and accepted Christ as their savior don't be, you, you don't want to be here you don't have to be here but there will be some who are here my advice to you tonight, accept Christ as your Savior while you can. Bring it down if I could. Uh, yes, go ahead. Sure. I once again want to emphasize the importance of you knowing the Bible for yourself, of you sitting down and reading it. Think about how your grandparents or your parents sat down and read the Bible and would study it so they would know God's Word. And we do the same thing. We're supposed to put our intellect aside and open up our hearts and say, show me Lord Jesus what it is you want me to know and read his word. And I promise you that he will answer if you give him that prayer. He may not answer at that very moment. You may not answer that very week or that very month, but he will answer because you're calling upon him, wanting to know about him. As I said earlier, there are two chapters in uh, the New Testament that speaks to the time of being in heaven and I said chapter 24 and chapter 25. And I'd like to read a little bit of chapter 25 for us this evening so that you'd be more acquainted. And you can visualize in your head and mind this period of time when the rapture occurs. And when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit where? Upon the throne of his glory. And you know when he was about to go to the cross? The, the, the Pharisees said, tell us if you are the Savior, tell us who you are. And he, Jesus says, I know that if I ask you a question, you won't answer it. But I want you to know this. Hereafter shall you see the Son of Man sitting on the throne. And when he said that, he was setting himself to a deaf wish or deaf witness, which he would be able to take on to heaven and show how he had died and look at the palm of his hands and his feet that he had given for us. How wonderful it is to know that. And, and before him shall be gathered all the nations and shall separate them, the one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. Mm -hmm. And he goes on to give detail of how 
one will be on the right side and one be on the left. And the ones on the left, he's going to say, depart from me, you that worketh iniquity. You didn't care anything about me. The only thing you cared about is yourself, your clothes, you're going to see your well play, your fine car, the things you had. You didn't care about the poor. You didn't care about the needy. You didn't care about the hungry. But now they are going to be fed, and you're the one that's going to be punished. So we see that they had that to look forward to, to know that Christ was going to come back and take care of all things. You know, when we used to be kids and we go to the movies, we'd see the bad guy look like he was winning all the time. But somebody in the movie theater would say, don't worry about it. You just wait till the end of the movie and see what happens. And at the end of the movie, we'd see the hero coming forward and winning the day. Well, that was just fiction, okay? That was comics. But we know in real life, Christ is salvation for us today, tomorrow, and forever. Those three points I said, in the past, in the present, in the future, he is that. Reverend Dow? Uh, I, I don't I'm, 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 Just to get back to the text mm -hmm. um, that we have for tonight, back to verse 15, uh, in uh, Revelation 7, chapter, mm -hmm. chapter 7, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Therefore are they, they are, well, maybe I should go back to 14 again. And I said, I know we don't have much time here, but I wanted to try to get this correct. Verse 14, and I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. He said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Notice, even during the, the time of great tribulation, you can still wash your robes in the blood of the Lamb. Christ is still going to be available. He never leaves us alone. But you have to accept him. These are they who have washed their robes. They accepted him. They did not become his enemy. Even after they saw the, the Christians raptured away, they washed their robe because the enemies of God, the enemies of Christ are going to pour out all kinds of mayhem on the earth as we will see once we get to the, the unveiling of all the uh, wrath of God. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him. Notice it says serving him. The objective will be serving him. If you want to go to heaven to play golf, you have to, you're not, it's not going to happen. Serve him night and day in his temple. And if you don't like to serve him night and day, then don't go to heaven. That's up to you. Serve him in the temple night and day in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. God will be pleased to be with his people at that time. They shall, they shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. Shall the, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. Notice these blessings that are going to be those who are in heaven. It's, it's going to be a great day. No wonder Paul said to live is Christ, but to die is gain. This is what he gained at once. Oh, God. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of water, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. I wanted to read the rest of that. God shall, I'm sorry my voice is raspy tonight, but God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. No more crying, no more headaches, no more hunger, no more thirst. All of the things that are done under the sun will be completed and over with, and God himself will dwell among his people. What a grand day, as Keith is uh, always saying, what a great day, what a wonderful time we are going to have. But we must be united in praise, not so much Baptists with Lutherans and all of that. Matter of fact, some faiths we just can't unite with. We, we have to be separate. The scripture says us, tells us, be separate from them. So we can't unite with everybody, but we can unite with those who are of like faith and kindred minds and know Christ as their Savior. Okay, Keith, I'll let you finish this up. 
as we come to the conclusion of our lesson this evening, once again, uh, we thank you for joining us. Yes. And want to emphasize again, you studying the Word of God for yourself. You drive that car for yourself if you have a car. You live in that house for yourself if you have a house. How much wonderful it is to be able to read the Word of God and to know what it means and to know that Christ loves us so much that he gave his only life for us. And that the evidence of his going and coming back again, we can see each and every day that we are alive. And also, when we have died, because death is nothing but a transition wow. from earthly life to heavenly life. And these people were in a heavenly life celebrating Christ, celebrating God, celebrating the Holy Spirit. And they were pictured there in white robes, robes of purity, and with the blood of Jesus washing away any sins, any doubts that they may have had. How wonderful it is to know that. Thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you, everyone, for being We hope welcome. that we haven't been too long, but like I said, read your Bible. Yes. It was a long time before I started reading mine, but I'm right. thanking the Lord that I do read it and I've learned to read it. And when I can't find out the answers to certain words and things, Bible dictionaries, commentaries, yes. research, study. Amen. Amen. It's the same thing as you preparing for a trip. You prepare yourself for that trip. All right. You should prepare yourself for the Word of God. Amen. So thank you, and we bless and pray for members of Beargrass, those that are ill, those that are going through hardships, those that are in search of answers. Turn to Jesus Christ because he is their answer. And we know our pastor's anniversary is coming up very soon, and we enjoy you, and we invite you to come and celebrate his anniversary with us. Amen. We know that you would have a wonderful time being in the house of God and celebrating Reverend Smizer and Mrs. Smizer's anniversary. How many years mm -hmm. Reverend Smizer? 17. 17. 17 years with Reverend Smizer as our pastor. This Sunday. Yes, this yeah. coming Sunday. Dr. Yeah. Stephen Smith is the guest speaker. Uh -huh. Reverend Smith from uh, Portland Memorial will be the guest speaker Amen. at our 11 a.m. service, the only service we'll have this Sunday. So thank you again, and let us close in prayer. Our Father in heaven, Every breath that we take comes from you. Every light that we see comes from you. The darkness cannot obscure your beautiful light, and you show it each and every day. Not only do you show it, Lord, in your nature, but you show it in us also. We thank you, Lord, for it. And when we sin, Lord, how wonderful it is that we have a Savior to go to to ask for forgiveness, who can take away our sins with his precious blood. No other person, no other one can do it but Christ, and you have done it. And we pray, Heavenly Father, for the young children that will come to bear grass by your word. We pray for the elderly that have put their trust and faith in you and the things that they have taught us and what they continue to teach us. And we thank Heavenly Father for blessing Reverend Smyth's family and guiding them. And we ask Heavenly Father that you let us be united in you because you are the only one. We praise you, Lord, and ask your healing upon those that are ill. In our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's name we pray and ask also, Lord, for comfort of those in mourning. In Christ's name we pray and thank you for this evening. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us this evening. Thanks again. Don't forget, fall back Saturday night. See you Sunday.